Hi there. I swear I wanted my last video to be the last on this character Hamza Tsortsis. He really does not deserve or warrant so much attention. <laughs> but he's so much fun. He manages to put together all these long words and sentences and hopes nobody will notice the vapid and utterly monotonous line of arguing. So I reacted to his vacuous claims and made some video responses. Now, instead of doing the honest thing and apologizing, or the obvious thing and keeping quiet, I was informed by someone last night that Hamza had left a reply or a reaction or whatever you want to call this on his Facebook page, choosing the stupid thing. His latest oeuvre, a justification piece, very quickly had me in tears. <laughs> I always have this picture of a little boy stopping his feet when I read something from him. He is such an angry person, so frustrated with the world, democracy, freedom and the establishment. <laughs> and in the beginning, when I first read his reply, I did not even see the references to me and my videos on him, as there is no logical or topological development, just this rant. But then I noticed the references to Craig and that he was parroting my vocabulary, so yeah, I guess this is about me. So let's take a look what he has to say. Um, um, question mark. Uh, that's always a good and intellectually stimulating way to start a conversation or essay. I could well imagine him starting a dissertation with the words, Hi, my name is Hamza. It also reminds me of one of my all-time favorites, when the movie Arthur Dotson the Butler comments, Yes, I look forward. I look forward to your next syllable with great eagerness. Then we have the philosophically tinted, epistemologically based, psychologically sound statement, this guy is very stupid. <laughs> do, do we learn what guy? Why? How? Nah, come on, that would require actual data, facts, and a functioning brain. And I think Hamza has a bachelor in psychology. Well, if he shows them this, maybe they'll settle for a refund. When he says he feels for me, what, what exactly does he feel? Does, is it pain, remorse, admiration, disdain, pity, contempt? Come on, man, be specific for once. You're not writing a second Quran, but a real text in Facebook, so there's no need to be vague and ambiguous. Hamza now claims that science has always been supportive, or, well, supportive argument. Being only a supportive argument, he sure uses it a lot. And he claims he only uses it in a supportive way when using cosmology. Now, cosmology is the scientific study of the origin, evolution, status and fate of the universe we live in. It's all about data, measurement and observation. And theories and models based on this data, measurement and observation. Now, Hamza tries to remove cosmology from this realistic physical cosmology and push it into metaphysical cosmology without ever defining it. He uses nebulous terms and hides behind vagueness. He labels the debate a debate, where in the debate he calls it a discussion. I don't want this to be a debate. I want it to be a conversation. So, in the debate, he takes scientific expressions and scientists and tries to show that this particular god exists. This is neither scientific nor philosophical, but mythical. He tells us he uses logics, for example, when talking about the differentiated infinite. The what? Alright, I have to admit, I never heard this expression, so I looked it up. Google had 67 hits, but only one in the area of religion, where Georg Hegel proposes it as a speculative element for the universalities and determinateness within a god, the supreme being. If Hamza calls that absurd, well then so be it. Now he turns to my comparing him with Dr. William Lane Craig, which seems to have touched a nerve somewhere. He says he does not copy or take his materials from him, but acknowledges his existence. Yeah, thousands won't believe. I, I'll believe you. Okay, yeah, I'll believe that. His, <laughs> his strongest argument in this debate, he used no notes, and Craig does. Um, well, if my eyes did not deceive me, Craig was not in this debate, Hamza called the discussion. And here, oh dear, look, Ma, no notes. Did it come in this critique and in the evidence where it And now hold the presses, 
Hamza says he uses the Quran, which Craig does not do, to explain, well, I suppose that's explain, the beginning of the universe. Sheer brilliance. Hamza next informs us that Craig is a Christian. Well, thanks for that useful information, which for once is actually correct. And then carries on to say that it's okay to parrot someone as long as you understand what you are parroting. But come on, Hamza does not understand in the least what come into being and begin to exist really mean. All we get is how the universe began. Well, at least he never explained the concept and when he applies it, it is horribly wrong. Now we finally get to what he calls the main point. What these atheists do. Atheists, all of them. So we atheists expose ourselves. What? In public? He says the create, I mean, I suppose that's they create a strawman. But does he know what that really is? Does he show anyone where the argument is and where the strawman is? No, that would require actual data, facts and a functioning brain. He then accuses all atheists of waffling. Does he provide an example? No. Is this logically possible? Well, only with difficulty. I don't speak for others, but I react to claims, which means I don't make stuff up. Hamza does, which is why he can waffle, and he does. And I just take his point and answer it. Oh, he does love to flatter himself, our Hamza, doesn't he? He calls his childish tripe scientific supportive evidence and says if you removed it, the argument itself would still stand. Let me be more benevolent and merciful than a god and pretend that there is something scientific about his arguments. I would love to see what would be left. If I take his, what, what, the 20 page pamphlet on, on embryology and remove the descriptions of reality, I would be left with three paragraphs from the Quran and the title. If I leave out his arguments from Valenkin, or sorry, Valenkin he, or Hawking he, or Polkinghorn he, in his example of quantum physics um, in the Pakistan debate, there'd be nothing left. Ex except for just some Quran statements, except for just some excerpts from a book. He then contradicts himself by taking someone like me serious enough to write about it on his Facebook page, but then says, why take <laughs> soothsayers seriously? Soothsayers? Seriously? Does Hamza know that a soothsayer is a person who professes to foretell events? Have I just been promoted to profit? Wow, gee, thanks, man. And here Hamza flatters himself again by claiming he exposed Professor e. Hoodboy. I suppose that's Professor. Is Professor Hoodboy really an arrogant man? I don't think so. Does anyone else find him arrogant for any reason? Not that I know of. Does Professor Hoodboy really not understand basic logics? <laughs> I think this is a childish lashing out at anything and everything in sheer frustration and rage. Ignoring an argument one has little knowledge of is not an agenda. It is wisdom. And Professor Hoodboy has wisdom. Did the professor belittle Islam? No, he merely pointed out that Muslims have little to show for themselves in the last a thousand years when looking at scientific applications. Is this arrogant? Is this belittling? Is this wrong? He smiled at Hamza trying to merge the Quran with quantum physics. And the same as almost every non-Muslim, people don't understand where the claims for a Quran with scientific miracles predating the 7th century come from. And no, Professor Hoodboy ignored only the stuff he did not understand or know anything about. He killed Hamza's arguments where he did have knowledge. What more can anyone expect? Hamza has a standing invitation to call into the Gin and Tonic show to discuss his issues with people who have more knowledge about the Quran, but he's been too afraid of that ever since he got so badly burnt on the Magic Sandwich show. Now, I don't know if that offer actually still stands after his atrocious behavior in Pakistan. Now, finally, Hamza closes his rant with the next lie, who clearly show their agenda and fail to engage. Now, who clearly shows their agenda? I suppose that's there, not there. And what is the agenda? What is it? For my part, it is to expose lies and show the truth. 
Is that a, a horrible agenda to have? And fail to engage in positive discussion? Oh, really? How can I if I am blocked everywhere by you, Hamza? So I don't fail, but am unable to because of your arrogance. I am allowed to post on your Facebook page if I beg and apologize for your ignorance and mistakes. And exactly what is a positive discussion? Only one where everyone agrees with you? On important matters, such as what? If religious humans would keep their religion to themselves, which has largely happened 20 years ago, we wouldn't have all this hatred and fighting. Remember something, please. Atheism is an ism which reacts. It only reacts. Atheists react to claims. And in the end, you bring forward another lie. No, I don't want monologues. I am forced into them by you. When you still had a blog, I tried to communicate and was blocked. On Facebook, I tried to communicate and was blocked. On the YouTube channel, I tried to communicate and was blocked. And you, hypocritical zealot, tell others they don't want to engage? I am the one who fails? You are a dreamer, Hamza. Time to wake up and face reality. I suppose that's uh, presume. And yes, Islam has no rational basis. The basis is the Quran. Is the Quran rational? Hardly. You claim it is of divine origins. Can you prove it? No. And the next lie, no, I do not intellectually belittle Islam. I try to intellectually belittle stupid and ridiculous claims made by Muslims regarding reality and their book. And yes, shame on me for daring to criticize.